My name is Esme Vershkort. My name is Jenna Barbary. I'm Zed Khan. I'm Matt Larson. My name is Paige Kasser. I'm Rachel Shower. Sam Miner. Brex Bazali. Noah Brown. Sam Luloff. Sawyer Tan. TJ Birnbaum. And I am Sustainable St. Thomas. 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 I care about creating sustainable communities. I care about renewable energy. I care about pollinators. I care about recycling. Sustainability and the common good. Sustainable food solutions. Fighting pollution in our community. Reducing our carbon footprint. I am Sustainable St. Thomas. I am Sustainable St. Thomas. I am Sustainable St. Thomas. And I am Sustainable St. Thomas. Sustainability is probably one of the biggest um, social issues of our lifetime. Humans are 100% dependent on this planet Earth. And so, you know, when we say save the planet, it's really save our, ourselves to some degree. This is going to affect every student and it's important then that every student be prepared to engage as leaders in the sustainability movement, regardless of what your discipline, your major, your minor, where your career is headed, this is your life. Back in 2008, the university confirmed its commitment to sustainability when then-president Father Dennis Deese signed the American College and University President's Climate Commitment. This pledged action to address climate change by reducing the university's carbon footprint. In the years since, sustainability is now a central aspect of campus life. Our current president, Dr. Julie Sullivan, explained, We have made remarkable progress toward our sustainability goals. Progress is being measured. One measure is called STARS, a self-reporting framework for universities to measure their comprehensive sustainability performance. St. Thomas has earned a Silver Stars rating for its sustainability efforts. I think St. Thomas has a responsibility to, stu to our students that first of all that they're exposed to this concept, that it's something that they experience, uh, they can see what responsible sustainability is, uh, and in the practice of experiencing it that hopefully they reflect upon that and they reflect upon the uh, value that it has for our uh, society and hopefully in that reflection sustainability will become for them a value that they are going to live by and promote. The university's commitment to fostering a more sustainable world has become a fundamental way we define ourselves. Let's take a look at some of the initiatives that work for the common good. Every day, hundreds of students come through at least one of St. Thomas's on-campus dining facilities for a meal or a quick cup of coffee. According to one estimate by Dining Services, The View, St. Thomas's main on-campus dining area, produces nearly 72,000 pounds of food waste per year, or about a quarter million apples. That's enough to fill O'Shaughnessy Stadium's football field from one goal line all the way to the other 25-yard line. So with all that food waste, that leaves one question. Where does it all go? Back in the kitchen of The View, in the main freezer, okay. lies part of the answer. These we can't recover just because of like how they packaged it. Hannah Wallace, president of the food recovery chapter at St. Thomas. This with the concealed lid and stuff makes it a lot easier. Organizes food runs to take uneaten food, weigh it, keep track of how much is taken, package it, and store it. Dining services, specifically the view, we need to be able to make sure that we can feed all of the mouths that come through here, but that's a lot of guessing. It just is inevitable that we're going to have food waste, but saving that so that it can feed hungry people is really important. Once stored, Wallace and a rotation of volunteers move the food to her car, load it up, and take it to Catholic Chair. And just to see that this food would otherwise have gone in the landfill, um, it's, just, it's just powerful, and it's, it felt good to be doing it. Wallace said The View donates up to 10% of its food waste every year, turning 8,000 pounds of food into meals provided by Catholic Charities. We want to show that we do care and we use every bit of your product. We feed every day 700 people, 700, every meal counted, and every day. That's something Wallace and The View can feel good about. It's a really big issue globally, and if we can do small 
um, things to have positive impact, then that's really important. St. Thomas is very good at producing carbon. Every time we commute to campus or throw away our lunch, we are contributing to an ever-rising CO2 emissions total that is warming our planet at an alarming rate. Which is why, in 2008, then-President Father Dennis Deese signed the American College and University President's Climate Commitment, committing our campus to achieve carbon neutrality by 2035. So, while we are very good at producing carbon on campus, we're also committed to changing that culture for the common good. St. Thomas has reduced total emissions by 41% in the last 10 years. We've done this by figuring out where our carbon footprint comes from and finding a solution to reduce those emissions outputs. But to reach our goal of carbon neutrality by 2035, we'll have to do a lot more than change some light bulbs. It's easy for students to focus on what St. Thomas is doing to be carbon neutral or environmentally friendly or sustainable. But the largest impact that your university has in carbon neutrality is the 1,500 undergraduates that graduate every year and developing an awareness in them of environmentally friendly, sustainable activities. So when they go out in the world and become part of our 100,000 plus alumni, they're living in a sustainable way. That's always, always going to have a much larger impact on global sustainability efforts than what we might do uh, in terms of the physical facilities of the university. In the interest of providing University of St. Thomas students with the opportunity to share their skills, the Sustainable Communities Partnership gives students a chance to lend a hand. So the Sustainable Communities Partnership was originally an idea proposed to advance the strategic mission of St. Thomas of interdisciplinarity and applied learning. The idea behind this is that community partners, cities, government agencies have lots of questions that are really important to them but not urgent. And students are learning all these amazing things and can apply what they're learning creatively and innovatively to help advance those goals. So Sustainable Communities Partnership brings those together. To increase community access to students' research, SCP took the turn to present their data through art with resident artist Sarah Nelson. I'm really excited about it because I think for the first time in a long time, um, the sciences are looking for artists and the artists are looking for researchers and scientists to actually bridge this gap. Um, and so I think our world honestly can like, be a more unified and more informed place. By marrying art with science, SCP hopes to give all members of the St. Thomas community a chance to take part. Some classes may engage with a project for a few weeks and some may for the entire semester, but the idea is to reduce barriers to participation so that everyone can participate if they'd like and every discipline has something incredibly valuable to offer. It will inspire people as they leave the classroom to engage creatively um, in whatever sphere they end up in um, so that their work can be more accessible and, and have a greater impact. Just down Summit Avenue from St. Thomas is the Mississippi Riverfront Trails, one of the most scenic areas in St. Paul. And every semester, a group of students come to help take care of the land and preserve the nature in it. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Thanks for coming to the river cleanup. This is a huge group. We're so happy. Tove Conway, president of the St. Thomas Sustainability Club, helped lead over 50 volunteers in this semester's cleanup. It's just really, really awesome that you know we get to see this kind of turn out for our club. And people want to be a part of this too, just as much as we do. You know, we're super excited. We woke up this morning and people feel the same way. So Mississippi River Cleanup, organized by the Sustainability Club in the city of St. Paul, is designed to pick up the trash on the east side of the river from the Ford Parkway Bridge all the way to the Marshall Bridge. There's so much trash. For St. Thomas senior Emily Stickney. Much and then you start looking in the places where people don't go as much and you realize like it's just everywhere. The cleanup makes a global problem hit home. Um, I think it's really important that we're keeping our like natural areas clean and kind of minimizing our pollution. It's easy to remove yourself from the problem, but St. Paul is part of the problem and we still have pollution here that we can 
minimize our contribution to the rest of the negative effects going on. Armed with yellow trash bags, the volunteers were able to work their way from bridge to bridge in just under four hours. This is like home for everybody and I think it's a privilege to be able to be out in nature and I think it's, um, it's our duty as citizens of St. Paul to keep it clean. A duty that Conway believes needs to be thought of every day. It's not just that one day that matters or makes changes to this earth, it's you know the actions that you take every single day. At the University of St. Thomas, renewable energy is produced on campus by solar panels in several different locations. Student Center has the majority of them. There's two solar arrays, one's at Student Center, one's on Brady Hall, but we mostly concentrate on the one in Student Center. That's but just under 100 panels there. Um, Brady has about 20. The overarching research project that I've been a part of, we call it the Microgrid Project. Um, it was started with a grant from XL Energy, and that essentially gave the university money to build a microgrid on campus. And the goal is to have enough renewable energy on campus that our entire campus is net zero. The panels here are, are part of our current project. As kind of an offshoot of the overarching microgrid project, we started doing more research on small systems, something we call personal power. The research done on solar energy allows St. Thomas to maximize their renewable energy output. I started my research project with some software-based things, um, analyzing weather so we can better predict and compare with our solar and our wind and, and energy sources like that. What we're doing is focusing on conservation, and that's what I do mostly, is how do we save energy? And we're, we're still in a phase of, of how can we conserve more energy. The use of solar panels offers financial and ethical benefits to St. Thomas. So these panels are just connected right to the grid, essentially. So they feed into our electrical service and then right back to Excel Energy. So they give us basically a credit back for what we produce. If we wanted to make a difference, if we wanted to really change the world for everyone, we needed to take what we've learned here and we needed to apply it out in the world for the common good. In a quiet space behind the Brady Education Center in South Campus, researchers in the biology department are breaking ground. We're a couple of week or so ahead of where we normally are this time of the year. So the nice thing about doing a five-year project is by year three you kind of know what you're doing. <laughs> Since the stewardship garden began nine years ago, it has blossomed into an outdoor laboratory where students collaborate to find solutions to pressing environmental issues. Notably, nutrient pollution caused by overuse of compost and other fertilizers in urban agriculture. You have a garden plot that's like 200 square feet. You just get a truckload of compost and shovel it on there um, and, uh, and it just, you know, it feels sustainable, right? More is better. In general, people are putting on 40 times more phosphorus than they're taking off in, in the form of crops. So for like every kilogram of phosphorus that they take off, and, you know, they harvest as vegetables, they're putting on 40 kilograms of phosphorus. So the question is, where's the rest of it going? Dr. Small and his team test nutrient runoff using custom tools. An algae bottle attached to a funnel and uh, we have this Tygon tubing. Uh, it's under the soil, it collects the leachate and every week um, starting end of May, uh, you some, sometime around May, we're gonna come and draw a water sample using a syringe that's hooked up to the other end of the tubing and uh, we take the water sample back to the lab and we run it for dissolved nitrogen and phosphorus. Dr. Adam Kay, who initially founded the Stewardship Garden, hopes the research can inspire sustainable agricultural models across the country. We need to be able to have more agricultural activity, but without cutting down more forests. So we could grow in cities. There's a lot of complexities in terms of bringing that out, but that's something that students and faculty and community members could all work together in order to make happen. That just makes more robust, resilient communities, more community engagement, community togetherness. For more information on getting involved in this project, 
visit USTStewardshipScience.org. A study published in the Clinical Nutrition Journal found that the average college student in America drinks just over a cup of coffee every day. And with over 6,000 undergraduate students, the University of St. Thomas has a lot of coffee to make. This demand for caffeine has led to a new push to make the coffee production at St. Thomas more sustainable. Currently, the university sources coffee through a local organic fair trade vendor called B&W Specialty Coffee, which operates out of Minneapolis. This local sourcing cuts down on shipping costs and emissions. Dining Services has also started offering locally sourced organic kombucha at the coffee shops, looking to continue building their collection of ethically sourced products. In the coming years, Dining Services looks to continue adding to their sustainable repertoire. We have a whole list of initiatives that will be rolled out uh, later um, this summer, early into fall, uh, more reusable cups, um, making them available to everybody, giving discounts for using those cups um, as an incentive to stop using disposable. We often hear, save the bees, but what does that phrase really mean? Doreen Schroeder and Katherine Grant created the Pollinator Path to boost the presence of pollinators at St. Thomas with hopes that students and faculty might stop and take notice. The educational part is about, you know, pollination decline and native bees and honeybees, but we wanted people to stop not to see flowers, but see whether or not there's anybody on the flowers eating things, um, eating pollen and nectar. And so that was like our first goal was really simple, just to do that. The pollinator path consists of a series of beds across campus with plants and flowers that provide nourishment for pollinators native to Minnesota. One area they're the most excited about is the stewardship garden, which showed great results last year. I made a big bed in the shape of a crescent, put a bunch of hundred plants in that were donated by the neighbors, and they grew. And it's the most, yeah. of all the places on campus, um, it's the most stunning one. Not because of how it looks aesthetically, but because it's so crowded with insects. The biology department also performs a weekly census in order to collect data about pollinator activity. In order to do this, they mark individual bees with non-toxic nail polish and track appearances on different beds. Last summer we saw eight different species, and that happens to be 50% of the total number of bumblebee species known in the state of Minnesota. So that's, that's really great diversity right here on campus. This year's pollinator path will be in full bloom early in the summer of 2019 in vibrant shades of purple and white. While the path will make campus look beautiful, its impact is what matters the most. I think one of my messages is I think you can get depressed about a lot of things going on in the world today and a lot of things that you might focus on and get upset about, there's not much you can do. You can write a letter to your senator, you can donate to some nonprofit, you can go to a march. But for the pollinator problem, if you have some land, you just plant flowers and you can make a difference really quickly. So that's my message. <laughs> so when you and I are out in Rocky Mountain, you're up there in the vistas overlooking the Great Valley. Uh, there are bugs up there, and there are plants up there, and there are a few elk up there, but there's really only one creature up there at the top of that mountain, taking it in as an experience of awe. And that is the human person. So one of the reasons Catholics care about the environment it's because in giving our due regard to the cosmos and the creator that gives it to us, we express our human dignity. We actually express what it means to be a human person. It's not consistent with our excellence to be so indifferent to the circumstances that we find ourselves in. So Catholics take ecology and care of creation seriously because we take the person seriously. As part of their experience here at St. Thomas, uh, we would hope that students begin by asking some very fundamental questions, questions like, why am I here? Not necessarily meaning here at St. Thomas, but why am I here in this world? Uh, what's my destiny? And to see that my destiny is not totally consumed and focused by my own personal needs and wants, because if we are really thinking in terms of uh, the future generations that are going to come, we want to give them a world that, if anything, is better 
than, than the world in which we live. So uh, sustainability is a huge, a huge value uh, as we look at those principles. I think the most important thing a Catholic should do in relationship to the environment is contemplate and contemplate its beauty to make yourself available, docile to the beauty of creation and use the beauty of creation as an invitation to the spiritual life. One of the many ways St. Thomas acts as a sustainable university is through its recycling program. St. Thomas has been cycling for several years and Paul Hippetz has been around for much of the time at St. Thomas. We are trying to educate uh, morally irresponsible um, leaders, so by recycling uh, you're doing something moral and responsible. The recycling program at St. Thomas uses a commingled system. That means that you throw your recycling all in one can. Prior to adopting the commingled system, St. Thomas used source sorting, in which students would separate all recyclables by their product type plastic in this bin, paper in that one, metal in another. Um, there are a lot of advantages, advantages to the source sorting process that we uh, used to do in that um, your recycling stream is much more pure. There's a lot less uh, cross-contamination. Yeah. The grass is, the glass is not getting crushed up and mi mixed in with the paper. Um, there's not a lot of grease and uh, food soilage that was being mixed with the paper and the cardboard and whatnot. Um, but there is a trade-off to that too in that you have a, an increased recycling rate because uh, people find it easier to just put it all in one bin. While it's easier to put everything into one bin, a way in which students can improve the commingled system is by putting the proper products into it. Typically anything you get in, a, um, in the mail regarding if it's defined as paper should go in there. Food boxes, and we like to call them box boards, so your cereal box, but pull the plastic bag out. Again, that's plastic films. Um, beverage cans, so all your aluminum cans. Food cans, so all those small metals. And that kind of also can encompass, if it's small and metal, you think about the size of a spade shovel blade, anything that big and smaller that's defined as metal, you can safely throw into the recycling. All of your jars, your glass jars, your plastic jars, but you want to remove the majority of the food. They want to kind of say like 3% food remaining or less. Um, and then your plastic bottles, one of the number one, um, two things I'd like to say about plastic bottles. One, you want to empty them. So don't leave two inches of Pepsi in the bottom of your Pepsi jug, you're just contaminating the rest of the recycling. But also screw that cap back on. By putting the proper products into the recycling bins, students can help St. Thomas become an even more sustainable university. My name is Amir Nadav and I'm the Assistant Director of Campus Sustainability at the University of St. Thomas. I care about educating the next generation of sustainability leaders. The students have played a really big role in driving a lot of the changes um, and improvements we've seen on campus related to sustainability, and they can make a really big difference. I want students to know that they can come to St. Thomas and be sustainability leaders, and there are multiple ways that they can get involved in sustainability. They can major in environmental studies or environmental science, they can minor in sustainability, uh, they can get involved in a student club that works on these issues. We have research scholarships, sustainability scholars, grants for students. You don't have to um, be studying environmental studies to get involved. It really relates to any career path you may pursue. The sustainability plan at St. Thomas will really launch our efforts to coordinate on sustainability initiatives institution-wide. You know, so developing that culture of sustainability, bringing together students, faculty, staff, and alumni um, to all really collaborate on the next steps of working towards our long-term goals. We have two high-level goals for the sustainability plan. Uh, one is to achieve a STARS Gold rating by 2025, and the plan also charts our path forward towards carbon neutrality by 2035 with an interim goal of reducing emissions by 50% below 2007 levels by 2024. Um, the Sustainability Council at St. Thomas brings together faculty, staff, and students, and it meets throughout the year. And so the council will be reviewing progress, sharing information, updating the plan as necessary. 
So the university's sustainability strategic plan represents our vision for creating a culture here at St. Thomas that prepares students to be sustainability leaders and how sustainability is really central to our mission of advancing the common good. I am Amir Nadav and I am Sustainable St. Thomas.